All right, everyone, welcome back to 3 a.m. cards. And today we're actually not doing a full box opening video. We're going to do a little mail day video of some cards that I ordered probably two months ago. I remember most of what I ordered, but these have been sitting here for nearly two months. I was working on some commander decks and got involved in some other things. So this will be a good video because it's, it's going to refresh my memory so I remember what I bought. And it's also going to be good for you because maybe you see a card or two in here that would be a good fit for your deck. And because I can't make a video normally without doing any kind of opening, if you stick around till the end, we're going to open that Lord of the Rings collector booster right there. So let's look at what we got in the mail two months ago. Not, you know, that mail day happened two months ago, but let's go. So first up, we got the Terastodon. Emphasis on the ass. So eight mana, nine, nine, when it ETBs, destroy up to three. You may destroy up to three non-creature permanents. For each permanent uh, put into the graveyard this way, its controller gets a 3-3 three, three green elephant. So man, you clone this thing, and you can blow up people's lands. This, this card is absolutely brutal. It is eight mana, but all kinds of ways to trick it out. Cheat it onto the battlefield even faster. We got Death Cap Cultivator. So two mana, two, one. Um, it does have that Delirium ability there where uh, he's going to gain Death Touch if there are four or more cards among card types in your graveyard. But I basically just got this because it's another Mana Dork. It was a really cheap card, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'll take that. Because, like, Elves of the Deep Shadow, she just adds a black mana. So I did like this because um, Ornithopter of Paradise is cool. I've been running that in a lot of decks because that's a two-mana uh, artifact creature. Produces mana of any color that you want. But I, I just wanted to run a different Mana Dork. Then we got Life's Legacy. So two mana sorcery is an additional cost to cast the spell, sack a creature, draw cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power. Instant speed would be better, but kind of a no-brainer how good that card is. Then we got the Phyto Titan, I do believe it is. So six mana, seven, two. And this was for my Golgari Sacrifice deck, because when this dies, return to the battlefield, tapped under its owner's control at the beginning of his or her next end step. So I sacrifice it with a Golgari, each opponent takes 7 damage, and then I just get it back at the end of the turn, and then probably when, um, at the beginning of uh, basically every end step, I'm just going to sacrifice this and keep having it come back. Is it when it dies, return it to the, at the beginning of, oh, okay, so it doesn't come back until my upkeep, I misread that. But yeah, I can still keep getting this back and still hitting everyone for 7 damage. We got the World Shaper from Rivals of Ixalan. So four mana, three, three. When it attacks, you may put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. So mill three. And then when she dies, put all land cards from your graveyard onto the battlefield tapped. So maybe, uh, maybe landfall deck as well. We'll see. The Nature's Claim, this is a really basic one. We actually got some of these in that last Iconic Masters opening, but one mana instant to destroy artifact or enchantment. Um, the controller gains four life, but... Yeah, if I'm going to destroy it for one mana, you can have that for life. Even five if you want. All right, so now we got, uh, we're on to the black cards now. So I think most of these were actually for my Turgrid Commander deck. All, all of these were either for the Golgari Sacrifice deck or Turgrid. So let's look at what we got here. Uh, Songs of the Damned. It's an interrupt. Instant now. But yeah, Songs of the Damned from Ice Age. So add one black mana for each creature in your graveyard. Well, I did buy two copies. So yeah, that's just a way to get some extra mana. I mean, I feel like whenever I go to play that, I'm going to have, like, no creatures in the graveyard. Another good one here for some black ramps. So we got Bubbling Muck. This is High Tide, except it's for Swamps. So it is at sorcery speed. I'm pretty sure High Tide is at instant speed. Whenever a player, until end of turn, whenever a player taps a Swamp for mana, they get an additional black mana out of it. Then we got the Arterial Flow. So three mana sorcery, each opponent discards two cards. If you control a vampire, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. I just like how this is a discard spell. It's going to hit each opponent because a lot of discard spells, some, not all, they'll only hit target opponent. And we got the chain of smog. So two mana sorcery, target player discards two cards from their hand. That player may copy the spell and choose new targets for that copy. That is basically purchased uh, because there are a lot of combos you can do with this card. Mainly with Professor Onyx, you target yourself, uh, you discard. It doesn't matter if you don't have the cards to discard anymore. The spell is still going to resolve. You can copy it. And then if you have Professor Onyx on the battlefield, there's a really easy... Um, could be an insta-kill as long as your opponents have no way to interact. 
We got Magus of the Coffer. So this is a budget Cabal Coffers. He is a five mana four four though, so that is pretty slow. You're not going to get that out early game. But two mana, two color, two generic. Tap him, then you're going to be able to add a black mana for each swamp you control. Yeah, because Cabal Coffers, that card still runs a pretty penny. We got Butcher of, Ma Butcher of Malakur. 5-4 flying for 7 mana. Yeah, that's stiff. But whenever it or another creature you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield each turn, each opponent sacrifices a creature. So that's for the turd grid deck just to keep going with the sacrifice mechanic. We got Unnerve. 4 mana sorcery each opponent chooses and discards 2 cards. So again, I like spells that are going to hit each opponent for discard. Just a couple more here. So we got Torment of Hailfire. Apparently one of the few good cards from Hours of, Hour of Devastation, but this is the list version. So uh, two black mana and X repeat the following process X times. Each opponent loses three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. So that spell out there with Turd Grid and a lot of mana. I call her Turd Grid on purpose. Um, yeah, that could be a real bitch right there to deal with. Then we got Fraying here, so 5 mana sorcery from Magic 19. Each, pl each player loses half their life and discards half the cards in their hand. Sacrifices half the creatures they control round up each time. So if I got Turd Grid out there, I'm going to go ahead and get all the goodies from my opponents. Then you get the Megrim. So 3 mana enchantment whenever an opponent discards a card, they're going to take 2 damage. So again, Turd Grid. Damnation, I don't know why I bought this. I must have needed another copy because I sold all my Double Masters copies. But uh, mono, black, mono Black Board Clear here. So four mana sorcery. Destroy all creatures. They can't be regenerated. I was going to put this in my girlfriend's zombie deck, but she runs Zombie Master, which um, can allow all your zombies to regenerate. So I do like how this is four mana, but she's going to lose most of her creatures if she casts this. But maybe if the situation's right, clearing the board is the right thing to do. And then final card before we get into that pack opening. So we've got Dictate of Erebos. Five mana enchantment with flash. Whenever a, whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Again, so to keep up with the turd grid theme, this is just going to be a really good fit for in there. And I do love how you can cast it at flash speed. Don't see a lot of black cards with flash either. Is that out of the color pie? I love everyone's going crazy over the color pie right now, but I want to go crazy over what is in this Lord of the Rings collector pack. Let's be greedy today. I said we don't care about value anymore, but we can still be greedy. We want a bow masters. We want a one ring. Let's see what we get. Probably not much with that attitude, right? Oh, okay. Delighted halfling went down a bit, but still a great pull. So we get the Delighted Halfling in the foil. Ooh, and the Mithril Code. Okay. So we are getting something here. It's a nice pull on the Mithril Code. We get Gollum. Frodo. Baradur. Flash of the Balrog. Okay, then Flame and Noor in the Extended Art Foil. And we got the Rosy Cotton as well. There's a combo in here we're going to go ahead and show off soon in the YouTube short. Yeah, I do believe this is the same box that I got the one ring from. So, I, you know, I really think all the gold's been pulled out of it. That's also the, one of the reasons um, when he was just asking about putting collector boxes up on the stream. Um, I didn't have a lot of Lord of the Rings collector packs left. But I didn't want to put those last few left because we were pulling from a box that we already got a Bow Masters. Excuse me, and a one ring from. So, I didn't want to sell you this pack for $40. And then you get like, I don't know, there might be like $20 worth of cards in there. But... All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm um, probably going to do another mailbag soon. I'm always ordering cards from TCG. I try to do it with the more interesting ones. I just ordered a bunch for Pauper, and most of them are just kind of basic and things most people know, so I don't think that will be that interesting. But next time we get some good stuff in the mail, we'll go ahead and take a look at it, and we will be back.